Hello, folks. My name is Rick Pearson, and this is Prophecy USA Bible Study Podcast, a podcast specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. We're here in Florida right now and are in the midst of traveling across America doing TV interviews for our latest book, The Coming Exodus. Uh, my best part, my better half, Karen, is not here. She's still in Canada, but... Um, on her behalf, as well as mine, uh, we would like to thank all of you who are supporting us by prayer, as well as with your monthly financial support. We thank you so much for that. And if you do not feel so led to help us with your finances, please be aware that we still consider it an honor <laughs> that you have joined us to a study America's role in Bible prophecy. The gospel is free, and it always will be. So we're just going to give you an update now. Um, we've had a TV show in the past, and I want to... I'm, what we're going to do today is we're going to revisit what we said in the past to compare with what's happening right now. Because what we said over a year ago is now starting to happen. And this is how you qualify whether somebody is tracking with God and hearing properly or not tracking. If the thing comes to pass, that is the thing the Lord has spoken. Now, <clears throat> prophecy... We see through a glass darkly. We miss things. Sometimes we think something's going to happen. It doesn't happen. Other times we think something's going to happen. Maybe it happens, but it's way out of the time sequence that we thought. Well, things in our mind here at Prophecy USA are accelerating <clears throat> much faster than I anticipated. So recently in Canada, uh, our government has just passed Bill C-11 which will restrict speech over the social media. In other words, our federal government has now taken away some of our basic freedom of free speech. And you might wonder, how can this happen? Well, over 50% of our Senate who voted this in are under the control of the World Economic Forum, global governments. And also, at this current time, now this is very, very sobering, our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, is meeting with premiers from every province with the, with the goal to have every promise, province sign on to a digital passport initiative. Now, I have called our Premier, Doug Ford, and I've asked him to call me. <clears throat> And I told his secretary that we wrote a book two years ago. It's a bestseller. We know where all this is going to. And I would like to share with some of our people in, uh, in the Ontario legislation, folks, do you know what you're doing? Now, to many who have no clue what is happening from a biblical perspective, <clears throat> this initiative is just another step in using technology uh, they say for the ease of travel. However, travel has nothing to do with this initiative. Associated with this digital passport, which, by the way, Canada has paid the World Economic Forum $105 million to design, it has some interesting tag-ons. The digital passport is designed to also tag into a person's health insurance, driver's license. Not only that, but since all the banks in Canada are now WEF sanctioned, these digital passports will eventually measure each person's ESG score. Now what's that? They will measure your environment carbon trail, your social, political, and geographical involvement with others, and of course, it will be governed by a social credit score, which will all be tallied by a central computer. Of course, if you don't meet certain social credit social score initiatives, the digital passport will have the power to deny access to your health, your bank account, 
and literally everything you decide to purchase within your digital currency. And this is why both Canada, the USA, and 80 other nations worldwide are developing the digital currency. Now, the World Economic Forum site, WWF, or WWW, Chris, maybe you could put that on, the w, uh, weffforum.org, states the following. Now, this is right off their site. I'm going to ask Chris to put that uh, page up. This is uh, what they say. Open technology can tackle the world's largest problems. Here's what's holding it back. And here's the next page. Implementing digital public goods would be used to leverage digital public infrastructure. It can provide crucial intervention for emergencies and development. DPI and DPG, when combined with community engagement and accountable governments, notice accountable governments, you're accountable to them, form open digital ecosystems that democratize access to government systems and enable collaborative citizenship services. Notice as it democratizes access to government systems. Key changes must be made to ensure that governments can maximize digital ecosystems to accelerate the achievement of UN Sustainable Development Goals. Sustainable Development Goals. That the world needs to sustain itself. So this is why they're cutting fertilizer to cut the food production and people are dying in Africa because we don't have food and yet they, they want to sustain the planet. What they want to do is sustain their power. That's what they want to su sustain. Now listen to this. The utility of technology solutions in a crisis has never been clearer. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown the power of leveraging the interconnectedness and interdependence between countries to design intervention tools. Now, <clears throat> here is what the Bible says in Revelation 13, 9. This is not the mark of the beast, but this is the technology that will be used when that comes down one day. And he, the Antichrist, causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and on their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast. So, for many non-believers, this sounds like a far-fetched conspiracy theory, but I'll tell you right now, it is not far-fetched. It is technically possible. On January 18th, 2022, officials from the Biden administration quietly sent the World Health Organization extensive amendments without an official statement or a single press conference. These proposed amendments are written to strengthen the organization's ability to unilaterally intervene into the affairs of nations merely suspected of having a health emergency of possible concern to other nations. If these amendments are approved, the World Health Organization will have the power to declare an international health emergency, nullifying the powers of nations and states. In other words, once we get a digital currency and a digital health, someone over there has the power to tell us what to do over here under the guise of an emergency. However, it would appear that whenever anyone challenges the global agenda of the world elites, they're always bombarded with the accusation of conspiracy or racism. Folks, this is right on their, their website. This is not a conspiracy. But you know, they can only play that card for so long and millions of people are waking up right now to what's going on in the, in the, in the world. 
many who maybe aren't saved, they don't understand the biblical interpretation what going, is what's going on, but they understand the political. Folks, it's an opportune time right now. If you get this book inside of you under casual conversation, you can, you can uh, uh, witness to people so easily, so easily right now. But these things are happening and it's no surprise to those of us who've been following our research concerning what the prophets within the scripture says. There is a beast system that will rise someday, and it's rising right now. Right now it's rising. So approximately a year ago, or two years ago, yes, it was two years, it's actually been two years since we wrote our first book, Nobody was warning you of what was coming except Prophecy USA. And today we have books being written on the Great Reset. We have prophets now starting to warn us that if America does not come back to God, we could possibly face judgment. Last week I interviewed Jonathan Kahn. And Jonathan Kahn uh, is right in line with what we're saying now, Jonathan Kahn has not made a statement that America is Babylon, but the same warnings, the same spiritual entities that are here from ancient Babylon, he agrees, and we're going to play that next week. Um, Chris is editing it now, and we hope next week will be our first podcast. Then we're going to put it on national television right across Canada and the U.S., um, the interview with Jonathan Kahn was, it, I was riveted by the interview. Um, he's a brilliant, a brilliant scholar of the word. And I learned a lot of things in that interview and we really connected. So um, that's next week. But right now, I want to review what we've said in the past and what's happening right now. Now, prophecy teachers, Fox News, Newsmax, even some prophets are warning us about Klaus Schwab, George Soros. And now, one year after Justin Trudeau declared war on democratic peaceful protests, within our Western Hemisphere, people now are on to Justin Trudeau. Where were these people two years ago? Why were they denying us interviews? Refusing us to put on their TV stations? Blocking us from what we were warning about? And now they're speaking about everything we warned you about. The signs of the times are fulfilling the warnings of the biblical prophets. Now last week we talked about testing the spirits of those who prophesy. Deuteronomy 18.22 says, If the thing does not come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. And tonight's podcast is about testing the spirit of Prophecy USA. Remember, we see through a glass darkly. No one has all the answers. And sometimes we don't understand a prophetic word until it comes to pass. And according to Paul, certain prophecies will fail. Why is that? Because God uses imperfect people, including myself, to try and understand what's coming in the future. But inevitably, God will release a sure word of prophecy within every generation. So we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater when somebody makes a mistake, but that does not mean that you have to drink the water hook, line, and sinker when somebody says, thus saith the Lord. So we are to test the spirits. Tonight, that is what I want you to do. We've pulled up a TV episode from over one year ago, and we've kind of re-edited it. Chris has cleaned it up a bit so you're not hearing, <coughs> you know, the intros and all that. But we'd like you to listen to what we said then and there and look and see what is happening here and now. So what we're going to do is we're going to reflect and take a serious look of how far we've come in just one year. As I said at the beginning, 
things are happening much faster uh, than even I anticipated. And it's very sobering from my end. We are, we are working very hard to get this word out and um, folks but th for those of you who are supporting us and and been walking with us for the last two or three years I want you to listen to this listen for what the Holy Spirit I believe was saying back then what's happening right now and next week we will join you again uh, on the podcast but we're going to let the TV show end this podcast so for right now we're going to beam in, and you're going to hear what we said then, what's happening now, and I think you'll find it very sobering on how fast this book is coming to pass. So for right now, you are there. Welcome back, folks. We'd like to invite you to join our Prophecy USA Bible study every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have live chat and many answers and questions from our podcast listeners, as well as our TV viewers. While traditional prophecy ministries focus strictly on the Mideast and refuse to entertain America's role in Scripture, Prophecy USA tries to address both. Now, you would think that the 53 biblical descriptions already fulfilled by America and documented in our book and study guide would persuade many Bible teachers that America is in Scripture. But that doesn't seem to be the case. You know, when Jesus came to deliver truth to power, He warned the scribes that they were steeped in religious dogma, making the Word of God void by their traditions that were handed down. Since the election victory of the Biden administration on November 3, 2020, those 53 prophetic fulfillments have now grown to 57. In just over one year, multiple covenant warning signs penned by Moses have been fulfilled by the Biden administration. However, today's current prophets and prophecy teachers will seldom even mention the written warnings of Moses. All prophecy, according to many traditional teachers, focuses over there in the Mideast, and America somehow, some way, will slowly fade away into the shadows of history, or so they say. However, that is not what the Bible says concerning the seventh nation, the seventh providential nation in history. According to Moses, there are specific warning signs to help a covenant nation recognize that they're heading in the wrong direction. From the Pentateuch, directly, to the national news, we can easily see the signs from the hand of God. Number one, we're teaching gender equality in the military. Number two, America fled from the Taliban in Afghanistan, leaving $85 billion worth of military equipment behind them. Number three, the Keystone Pipeline has currently ceased production depleting the nation's energy and self-sufficiency, making her dependent on other nations, some even hostile to the West. These nations are selling us energy that we already have right here in our own backyard. From the insanity of these decisions from the Biden administrations, we've become the highest debt nation in the history of the world, with rampant inflation devaluating our currency at breakneck speed. So with all these national and global emergencies, those who don't believe in the Bible prophecy are strategizing night and day to fulfill the very prophecies that they themselves don't, don't believe in. Of course, these facts are touted by the left-wing media as conspiracy theories, even if they know that their policies are the foundation and source of creating the emergencies and the conspiracies. Listen to this. Some might think that America's rise to power is just a coincidence, but our research team at Prophecy USA are convinced that America's present role in Bible prophecy is no coincidence. She is the seventh of eight providential nations prophesied to rise. Her role is mandated by God, 
and it is one of the ways we can read the prophetic time clock as it relates to Bible prophecy. Daniel chapter 2 verse 21 states that God changes times and seasons, He deposes kings, and He raises up kings. From Scripture, it is abundantly clear that government was God's idea. In Romans 13 we read, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Paul is reminding us that we should, as citizens, be subject to the governing authorities. But what happens when the authorities are the wrongdoers? What happens when instead of doing good, they are doing bad and opposing God's laws? What happens when secular humanist, self-righteous rulers have no intention of ruling for the good of the people, but rather for the good of themselves? The biblical examples in Scripture consistently tell us that when a godless government opposes the righteousness of the people, the good people are well aware of it. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. One of the most flawed interpretations of Scripture within modern Christianity is the concept that the church or believers who should not be worldly are falsely interpreted as should not be involved in politics. If that dogma is correct, then Joseph should have never counseled Pharaoh. Moses should have never confronted Egypt. Samson and David should have never fought the Philistines. Nathan should never have exposed King David's adultery. Elijah should not have called down fire on the government-funded priests of Baal. Daniel should never have counseled Nebuchadnezzar. Every Old Testament prophet was involved in speaking truth to the powers that be. Meanwhile, in the New Testament, John confronted Herod. Jesus stood before Pontius Pilate. And 11 of 12 disciples were martyred for preaching in direct violation of Roman laws. So what do these examples tell believers today, especially in America? Since the end of World War II, the United States of America has stood in the gap to protect smaller nations from dictatorial rulers who would ravage them. She has fought communism, socialism, and brutal theocratic regimes around the globe, and done so, as most surmise, under the protocol of Judeo-Christian principles. Principles that spread democratic policy, allowing people to be free to vote, free to own property, and freedom to practice their religion, and the ability to live freely and pursue happiness with liberty. However, according to prophetic scripture, there is a coming day when that will radically change. A global new world order will rise with a Marxist secular humanist government. It will attempt to replace God with government and will not tolerate anyone who follows Judeo-Christian protocol. However, before that government rises, God has promised the seventh kingdom, Babylon the Great. Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars, and they shall lift a shout against thee. Before the new world order comes to power, there is a remnant inside of Babylon that are called to raise up a shout. A shout against Baal worship, a shout against child sacrifice, a shout against the beast who desires to control, manipulate, and put people under the fascist rule of a one world godless government. If you have been watching national and world events, you should realize that the mindset of the beast is not coming, it's already here. It has infiltrated the governments of North America. It has no plan to back down from its agenda no matter what lies, what deception, or what immoral, unethical tactics it takes. Secular humanists are determined to achieve their agenda and fulfill Bible prophecy. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill His will, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. According to the written infallible word of God, it is not a matter of if this word will be fulfilled. It's only a matter of when this word will be fulfilled. For only God knows the appointed time. 
Welcome back, folks. Although the Bible prophesies about a coming new world order, some have already tried to bring that about. From Stalin's communism, to Mao's fascism, to Hitler's self-proclaimed Nazi Socialist German Workers' Party, they have all attempted through one way or another, through military force, to become a new world order. But according to scripture, the global inspiration for a new world order will not take place by military force alone, but rather through the mental manipulation of the masses. From our best-selling book, The Hour That Changes Everything, our research found that as early as 1968, government leaders and MIT technicians began researching the sustainability of the planet, eventually forming the Club of Rome. And with the help of core-minded thinkers from MIT, computer scientists studied the exponential global growth scenarios of the world, saying that the population, agriculture, production, non-renewable resource depletion, and industrial output and pollution of the world will help them push the world towards a new world order. Now, these studies laid the foundation for the UN's 2030 Future Agenda for Planetary sus Sustainability. However, also originating from the Club of Rome was the concept that the creation of a new world order would be represented in terms of interacting regions with provision made to investigate any individual country or subregion. In this government, the globe would be divided into 10 specific regions, covering the seven continents of the world, and it would integrate peoples, multitudes, nations, and of course, it would be bilingual. One of the club's original members was the late Prime Minister of Canada, Pierre Elliott Trudeau. The Club of Rome co-founder, Alexander King commented that soon after its establishment in 1968, that Trudeau, quote, stimulated our thinking on the club's philosophy and methods. Now, Trudeau's interest led to the Canadian government sponsoring, sponsoring the Club of Rome's meetings at Montebello, Quebec in 1971. It was the critical meeting that led to the Limits to Growth report becoming a reality. The Club of Rome is advancing the agenda of Thomas Malthus, they said, who argued that population was held within resource limits by two types of checks. Number one, positive checks, which raised the death rate, and preventative checks, which lowered the birth rate. Positive checks included hunger, disease, war, and of course, pandemics. Preventative checks include abortion, birth control, prostitution, and homosexuality. Their vision to unite everyone with a common mindset is stated in their 1991 publication. In searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming or climate change, water shortages, famine, and the like, would fit the bill. Now, all these dangers are caused by human intervention, and it is only through changed attitudes and behavior that they can be overcome. The real enemy, then, is humanity itself. Now, today, the Club of Rome continues to be at the forefront of the challenging and controversial global, global issues of the day. And perhaps this is why they led the discussion at November 2021 United Nations Climate Talks. From their very own website, they state this, COVID-19 has further exposed our vulnerabilities and reinforced the case for emergency action. Therefore, the Planetary Emergency Plan accurately reflects the convergence of three urgent crises, climate, biodiversity, and health, and guides the work of the Planetary Emergency Partnership post-COVID. In other words, never let a crisis go to waste. In unveiling the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy, 
we not only look at a nation who has fallen into darkness, but we need to look at a global movement that has also fallen into darkness. Tara Henley is a former Canadian Broadcast Corporation journalist who recently resigned. The reasons for which were itemized in an interview she had with the National Post on January 3rd of 2022. She stated that our $1.2 billion government-funded Canadian Broadcasting Corporation has, quote, become less adversarial to government and corporations and more hostile to ordinary people with ideas that Twitter doesn't like. She later stated that to work at the CBC in the current climate is to sign on enthusiastically to a radical political agenda that originated on Ivy League campuses in the United States and spread through American social media platforms that monetize outrage and stoke social division. It is to allow sweeping social changes like lockdowns, vaccine mandates, and school closures to roll out with little debate. She further states to see billionaires amass extraordinary wealth and bureaucrats amass enormous power with very little scrutiny. However, journalists in Canada are not the only ones sounding the alarm concerning what Prophecy USA has been teaching over the airwaves for the last three years. Fox News recently covered the latest gathering of the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. We thank Fox and Jesse Waters' team for bringing the forum right into our living rooms. Listen to this. Hundreds of gas-guzzling private jets took off this week as billionaires from all over the world jetted off to Davos, Switzerland for the ritzy and glamorous World Economic Forum, a week-long event for the ruling class to talk down to the rest of us. And it's not for everybody. It's an invite-only event. And once you do get in, they divide you by class. You get a white badge with a blue line if you're rich enough. You just get a white badge if you're married to someone important. Or if you're just a part of someone's entourage, you get an ugly green badge. You're not good enough. They keep the elites together, and they have their own little police state to make sure these people are focused on ruling the world. If you're not from CNN or the New York Times and you show up uninvited, they'll probably arrest you. And it's all headed up by a guy named Klaus Schwab, who's pretty much running a one-world government here. He kicked off the week by saying the future is theirs, not yours. In our book, The Hour That Changes Everything, we stated that the decade of action calls for accelerating sustainable solutions to all the world's biggest challenges, ranging from poverty and gender to climate change inequality and closing the financial gap. They also stated that a recovery from COVID-19 should be pursued, one that addresses the crisis, reduces risks, relaunches the efforts to deliver the UN 2030 agenda. But instead of taking my word for what Klaus Schwab has said, why don't we hear it directly from him? The future is not just happening. The future is built by us, by a powerful community as you here in this room. We have the means to improve the states of the world. Of course, it's good to know that after flying to Davos in his private Gulfstream jet, the U.S. Presidential Envoy for Climate Change, John Kerry, has even more rules and regulations set for we, the little people. People forget greenhouse gases are pollution. And 15 million people a year die because of the quality of the air around the world. We're, 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 we're dealing with a crisis here, folks. It's a crisis made by human beings. Since COVID-19 seemed to be a grand slam for the decade of action agenda, perhaps we should get ready for the next pandemic, which of course is right around the corner. To comfort us on that subject is billionaire Bill Gates, who, like Kerry, flew into Davos 
in his hermetically sealed private jet. Listen to this. If it comes 10 years from now, we should have far, far better diagnostic technology. That is, be able to scale up every country within a month uh, to diagnose their entire population. We're a little distracted right now, so getting the debate going uh, is happening slowly. Now, it might seem very wonderful to listen how the elite's lofty goals will change the environment, cool the planet, and provide health, wealth, and prosperity to our benefit. But while the elite billionaires opine from their citadels of global governance, who exactly is going to do the heavy lifting to make these changes come about? It's very simple. It's going to be you and me. Listen to this. We need to accept that there will be some pain in the process. Uh, the pace that we need will uh, will open up for missteps. Mm. Uh, it will open up for uh, shortages on energy. It will create inflationary pressures. And maybe we need to start talking about that, that that pain is actually worth it. So according to self-made billionaire George Soros, the Jewish Holocaust survivor who admitted in a 1998 60-minute interview that he made a living in World War II by confiscating Jewish assets while Hitler was taking his fellow Jews to the gas chambers, is now concerned that our civilization just may not survive the current conditions of what's happening. Listen to this. Fighting pandemics and climate change, avoiding nuclear war, maintaining global institutions, have had to take a back seat to that struggle. That's why I say, our civilization may not survive. Of course, it's good to know that one of George Soros' major quotes on his bucket list of things to come may not happen, because according to secular humanism, the main obstacle to a stable and just world order is the United States of America. Oddly enough, this is exactly what the Bible prophesies over 2,000 years ago concerning Babylon the Great. And the ten horns, the new world order, and the beast will hate the woman, Babylon the Great. For a total debunking of the mainstream media's objective to disregard Bible prophecy as conspiracy theory, stay tuned, you're going to be amazed. In 2019, Prophecy USA showcased biblical warnings of the coming New World Order. In 2020, we warned you of their plans to use COVID-19 to accelerate that agenda. In 2021, we warned of the Babylonian spirits who are invading our nation to provoke curses upon the land, emulating Sodom and Gomorrah. But what is next? Prophecy USA is proud to present The Coming Exodus, Unveiling America's Future. In this exciting book, you will discover where traditional theologians have missed the mark and why prophecy teachers have refused to acknowledge that America's role in Bible prophecy is rapidly being fulfilled. When you give a donation of $35 or more, you will receive The Coming Exodus, Unveiling America's Future. Or for a donation of just $60 or more, you will receive both books, The Coming Exodus and The Hour That Changes Everything. Call 1-888-306-1759 or visit us online at prophecyusa.org. Welcome back, folks. You know, we've just heard from some of the most influential men in the world, men who have not been voted in, not been elected, not been ordained, or authorized by any government agency in the world, and yet, because they have money and power, they're influencing the masses to follow them. But of course, not everyone is drinking the Kool-Aid. Deuteronomy says the secret things belong to the Lord, but those things which are revealed unto us belong to us and to our children. Nobody knows the day or the hour of the Lord's return, but we do know that before that day comes, the eighth providential nation in Scripture must rule for a period of seven years. And according to Scripture, that new world order will be a godless, totalitarian global government. 
They will attempt to control everyone's ability to buy and sell. They will issue a mark on your right hand and on your forehead. They will fulfill every prophetic word that God has spoken. And they will be, it will be the worst time in the history of the world to live. But it will not come into power until the seventh nation, Babylon the Great, is deposed in one hour by a fiery judgment. Now, although most modern-day prophecy teachers, together with secular humanists, refuse to acknowledge America's role in Bible prophecy, some congressmen are not buying into the conspiracy theory comments that the news is giving us. Senator Rand Paul, to our knowledge, may be unaware of prophetic scripture, but he is certainly confirming its content concerning America's role in Bible prophecy and the global mindset of those who wish to depose her democratic protocol, a protocol that was founded solidly upon the Judeo-Christian heritage. Listen to this. Look how bad your government is in a country where you get to vote for these people. This would be a government, a world government, where you don't get to vote on anybody. This is everybody's worst nightmare. The bureaucracy that we have trouble in our United States because we don't get to vote on them, we vote indirectly. Can you imagine the one world bureaucracy of all these elitists and their private jets that would rule our, our country and we wouldn't get to vote? So I'm dead set against this. And they used to call people who talked about one world government, they used to say, oh, it's a conspiracy. We would always say, no, it's in their mission statement. They say <laughs> it at every meeting. That's what they're for. But uh, lock, lack of sovereignty means lack of freedom, and it means lack of responsiveness, and it's completely antithetical to everything our country stands for. Folks, nobody but God knows the day or the hour when these initiatives will actually take place. But we do know they are coming. So what can the average person do on a personal level? You know, perhaps it's time to get your house in order. Perhaps it's time to come back to God like you never have done in your life. It's time to make Jesus the Lord of your life, the Lord of your job, the Lord of your family, and the Lord of your finances. Join me in this prayer. Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for my sins and my trespasses against others. I ask you to come into my heart and help me live a life that's pleasing unto you. If you prayed that prayer, we'd love to hear from you folks. And for those of you who are supporting this ministry through prayers and also finances, we'd like to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We believe that this ministry has been raised up for such a time as this, and our number one objective is to let you know that Jesus Christ is alive, prophecy is being fulfilled, God is in total control of world events, and Jesus is coming back much sooner than many people think. Thanks for watching. My name is Rick Pearson. This is Prophecy USA. See you next week. Shalom.